Barrel blasting his way into the hearts of gamers since 1981, Donkey Kong and his family and friends remain among the most iconic cast of characters in Nintendo's long history. Over the several decades that the Kong family have been adventuring, this cohort of lovable primates have encountered many allies and adversaries of varying personalities. And this begs the question, which residents of the DK Isles remain the most noble and moral, and which ones cross the line into downright evil? I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and today we're looking at Donkey Kong characters from good to evil. Let's start with some ground rules. Firstly, we're only looking at the characters and their personalities canonical to the game series. Any characters or personality traits existing exclusively to the Donkey Kong Country TV series will not be taken into account. Sorry, Bluster Kong fans. Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong, big deal. What makes him so special? Secondly, we are looking at specific characters and not species. Any common enemies like Claptraps, Naughty, Zingers, and the like will not be listed. Lastly, one-off bosses that aren't the masterminds behind the adventures also won't be ranked, since they are working for their higher-ups, be it willingly or as a result of mind control. Their actions will be attributed to the final bosses of the games in which they appear. With all that established, let's cut the monkey business and get into our rankings, starting off with the most noble character and working our way down to the most evil. The golden banana of good goes to the deuteragonist of the series, Diddy Kong. Diddy is a fun-loving and rambunctious monkey who never forgets to have a blast while taking his adventure seriously enough to succeed. His loyalty to his big buddy Donkey Kong and his girlfriend Dixie Kong has never wavered and he's been shown to perform well both as a sidekick and on his own Kong quests. Diddy's loyalty and willingness to help extends beyond members of his own species. When Timbers Island was threatened by the likes of Whizpig and Diddy Kong Racing, Diddy was willing to spring into action and help prevent the evil pig from conquering the area. In doing so, he also helped kickstart the careers of his best friends Banjo and Conker, who both had their debut as racers in this game. Diddy's only flaw is that he can be a bit too temperamental, but since most of the other Kongs fall victim to this trait too, it doesn't knock him down any further on our list. At any rate, Diddy's selflessness, fun-loving attitude, and heroism manages to land him in the top spot for good. The silver medal for most moral monkey goes to Diddy's significant other, Dixie Kong. While not as active in adventuring as her boyfriend, Dixie shares many of the positive traits of her partner, namely her fun-loving attitude and loyalty. When Donkey Kong is captured in Donkey Kong Country 2, she helps Diddy in rescuing her best friend. She does the same for both Donkey and Diddy in the third game of the series. Much like Diddy, she's willing to be both a sidekick and a protagonist, and pull her weight in either scenario. Also, she's assigned to be the babysitter of that annoying runt Kitty in Donkey Kong Country 3, and never complains once about his incessant whining. That alone shows she has the patience of a saint, and safely secures her a spot this high up in our rankings. He has no style, he has no grace, Lanky Kong does however have a funny face and a good heart, which lands him the bronze medal of good. Arguably the most bizarre member of the DK crew, Lanky is an orangutan with a clown nose who helps his friends save their island from being destroyed in Donkey Kong 64. Described as the most laid back of the Kongs, Lanky always wants to make his friends and the player laugh to add levity to their dark situations. He saves Chunky from his cage after learning his handstand move, and even when he has to fight enemies, Lanky defeats them by shooting bubbles, which is probably the most pacifist weapon he could have chose. While he hasn't appeared in too many games, his happy-go-lucky attitude and wacky jungle hijinks allows him to stretch his arms around the bronze medal. The next spot on our list is a collective ranking of the racers in Diddy Kong Racing. Timber the Tiger, Banjo the Bear, Conquer the Squirrel, Tip Tup the Turtle, Crunch the Kremlin, Tipsy the Mouse, Bumper the Badger, and TT the Stopwatch. This group of racers have their fun halted when Whizpig arrives to steal the island away from Timber. The racers all team up to help Timber from succumbing to the plot of the Dark Pig Lord. It could be argued that some of the racers have less of a moral compass than others, with Crunch being a henchman of King K. Rule, and Conker, well, suffering from greed and alcoholism after the events of this game. <laughs> 
With that said, the fact that they are collectively putting their differences aside to help a friend and possibly their planet boosts their moral compass in this game by quite a lot. Now let's move on to our next entry. But first, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is an app and browser extension that essentially allows you to place your computer or phone anywhere in the world so that you can access the internet as if you were in that country. One of the big perks of this is being able to access different libraries of available content on your favorite streaming services. It's actually pretty shocking how many series and movies are available in other countries, but are region blocked here in the US and vice versa. For example, on the US Netflix, you can't access shows like South Park and Rick and Morty, but if you use Surfshark VPN, you can unlock them in a couple seconds. On Disney Plus, you can actually unlock a huge library of mature themed comedies, sitcoms, and shows like The Walking Dead that aren't available in the US. If you're a gamer, you can use Surfshark to gain access to earlier release dates for certain video games if your country's local release is later. And on a more serious note, it can also keep you protected from DDoS attacks and swatting, and as far as general security goes, it also encrypts all your data to help keep your passwords safe online. And on top of all this, Surfshark is the only VPN to allow users to use their account on unlimited devices, which is great, and you don't have to be super tech savvy to use it. It's all very, very simple. And here's the best part. Surfshark made a special promo code for our audience, so if you follow the link below and use code 1UPBINGE, you'll get 83% off and three extra months totally free. It's a hell of a deal. Thank you Surfshark VPN for sponsoring us today, helping us unlock more streaming content online and keeping our data safe. Now let's get back to the video. This Kong has style, so listen up dudes. Tiny Kong floats through the air onto the fifth spot on our list. The younger sister of Dixie, Tiny is another member of the Kong family who helps their island from being blown to smithereens in Donkey Kong 64. Due to her ability to shrink in size, Tiny Kong is able to reach and assist neutral characters such as the Banana Fairy and the Mermaid throughout her journey. This proves she's another selfless Kong who will put the priorities of others above her own. The reason Tiny ranks a little lower than some of the other Kongs is because she is portrayed as a bit of a diva, but her willingness to go on such a dangerous journey at such a young age more than makes up for her shortcomings. The first non-playable character on this list, Kay Lumsey, gets imprisoned into the next slot on our countdown. Kay Lumsey is a large but sensitive Kremlin who thinks Kongs are cute and wants no harm to befall them. King K. Rule captures the gargantuan crocodile after he refuses to smash Donkey Kong Island into pieces. Throughout their adventure, the Kong family collects keys to Kay Lumsey's locks and eventually frees him. Upon his release, K. Lumsey thwarts King K. Rule's escape by destroying his airship and subsequently beats him to a pulp. This does demonstrate that K. Lumsey will resort to extreme violence, but after being unfairly imprisoned for so long, can you really blame him? Next up, we have our most confusing character on the list, Donkey Kong Jr. Donkey Kong Jr. is the son of the original Donkey Kong who would eventually become Cranky Kong in the Donkey Kong Country series. The younger Donkey Kong in the country games onward is described as Cranky Kong's grandchild, making Donkey Kong Jr. the father of that Donkey Kong. Although we can't rank his deeds as an adult, due to us never seeing him in that stage of his life, we can take a look at Donkey Kong Jr.'s acts of morality as a child. He frees his father from Mario in the 1982 arcade game, proving even as a child, he's willing to help his father through the most serious situations. He also demonstrates that he wants to help educate children by teaching them math, as unsuccessful and unpopular as that attempt may have been. While he's been absent outside of cameo appearances for many years, we're hoping one day Donkey Kong Jr. will return, maybe to challenge Mario to another race. The next spot on our list goes to another collective ranking of the animal buddies found in the Donkey Kong Country games. This includes Rambi the Rhinoceros, Squawks the Parrot, Engard the Swordfish, Squitter the Spider, Ellie the Elephant, Ratty the Rattlesnake, and many more. For all of their hyperactive tendencies, it seems the Kongs are about as efficient at taming wild animals as Mario is at taming dinosaurs. Sometimes the Kongs are riding the animal buddies, and sometimes they transform themselves into them using animal barrels. In either case, the animal buddies do their best to help the Kongs fight their enemies and achieve their goals. Even when they reach a no animal sign, they often turn themselves into various useful items for the Kongs to collect. I guess these creatures really are a monkey's best friend. One of the more forgotten characters in Nintendo history, Stanley the Bugman from Donkey Kong 3 comes in next. Mario's apparent older cousin, Stanley prevents the enraged ape in this game from destroying the flowers in his greenhouse. 
While his goals are not as grand as some of the other characters, Stanley does demonstrate his willingness to jump into action. The fact he runs a greenhouse also shows him to be environmentally friendly. It's hard to say much more about his morality due to his limited appearances, but as far as we can tell, he does have his heart in the right place. The most polarizing member of the Kong family, Kitty Kong, is up next. In Donkey Kong Country 3, Kitty is taken on an adventure with Dixie to save Donkey and Diddy from K. Rule. This definitely shows he is capable of heroic acts and has good teamwork skill with Dixie. However, due to his young age and possible mental issues, Kitty doesn't seem to be able to grasp the severity of the situation like Dixie does. He is portrayed as childish and whiny, in a stark contrast to Donkey Kong Jr., who is much more mature for his age. Despite this, Kitty is a lot more proactive than many of the adult ape characters in this series, so for that, we're giving him a respectively high position. Right below Kitty, we have his older brother, Chunky Kong, the only Kong to be exclusively playable in Donkey Kong 64. Chunky Kong is the strongest member of the DK crew. While having a timid and gentle personality, Chunky is very helpful to the Kongs on their journey. He will ultimately put his strength to good use in order to further his family on their quest. These aspects definitely show us that Chunky is a good-hearted primate, but what ranks him a little lower than some of the other Kongs are his actions as a result of being a scaredy cat, specifically in the tag barrel, where he's unwilling to go into combat and even suggests to the player throw young Tiny in the front lines instead. Moving on from the playable characters, Taj the Genie rides his magic carpet into the next spot. Appearing in Diddy Kong Racing, Taj helps the other racers by transforming their vehicles and giving them balloons for defeating him in racing challenges. His willingness to help the player is what ranks him so high on our list. What doesn't rank him higher is that he clearly has the racing skills to help the other characters conquer Wizpig's challenges, but doesn't for whatever reason. In Diddy Kong Racing DS, he eventually participates in the races themselves after the player beats the first adventure mode, but that's too little too late. Still, his magic does help the racers greatly on their quest, so we will give him his due props. Moving back to Gorilla Territory, Wrinkly Kong is up next. Although she is described as the wife of Cranky Kong, we never actually see the two in the same room together. This could possibly mean she's separated from her grumpy husband, and we can't say we blame her. In Donkey Kong Country 2, she runs Kong College to help educate Diddy and Dixie, even if she won't do it for free. From Donkey Kong 64 onwards, Wrinkly Kong appears to have died at some point, which is a surprisingly depressing fate for a character in a Donkey Kong game. Nonetheless, even from beyond the grave, she attempts to help her family, giving them clues of situations they will face in their levels. Her loving nature, even in death, firmly cements her a position as one of the more moral, non-playable characters. The much younger and more flirtatious female primate, Candy Kong, comes in next. Donkey Kong's love interest throughout the series, Candy Kong helps the players save their game in the first Donkey Kong Country. In Donkey Kong 64, she expands the Kong's artistic abilities by teaching them how to play instruments. Candy Kong is portrayed as very flirtatious with everyone, which could be seen as a negative since she is already in a relationship with Donkey Kong. However, her flirtatious nature does come into good use during the final battle of Donkey Kong 64, where she distracts King K. Rule during the fight. Her characterization is much more negative in the Donkey Kong Country TV series, where she is portrayed as impatient and short-tempered. In the context of the games, however, Candy definitely ranks among the more decent characters in the series. The grooviest gorilla of the bunch, Funky Kong, lands his plane into the next spot. A free-spirited ape who swings to his own beat, Funky often aids the characters in their quest by providing weapons and vehicles for them to use. His varied skill set and multiple appearances throughout the series definitely makes him a vulnerable asset for the Kong family to have. The only things that prevent Funky from ranking any higher is that he is clearly in very good shape, but for whatever reason, never joins the Kongs on the front lines. He also loses some points for sending baby Kitty Kong on a perilous journey with Dixie and Donkey Kong Country 3, all because he didn't want to babysit the young primate. Still, his acts of assisting the Kong family definitely makes him a character who mostly does good deeds for the right reasons. The banana from another plant, Zananab, invades our next spot. Appearing in DK Jungle Climber, Zananab is a member of a race of aliens who resemble bananas. After having his collection of crystal bananas stolen by King K. Rule, Zananab enlists the help of Donkey Kong and friends to retrieve his lost property. Throughout the adventure, Zananab will appear in certain levels to assist the Kongs through tight situations. Due to his appearance in only one game, little is known about Zananab outside of Jungle Climber. 
Based on his role in that game, he definitely appears to have good morals for someone not accustomed to Earth's customs. Fluttering into our next spot is the Banana Fairy Queen from Donkey Kong 64. The Banana Fairy Queen enlists Tiny for help when her loyal subjects are scared away by King K. Rool. Upon receiving her fairies, the Banana Fairy Queen awards the player by filling up their ammo and increasing the capacity of their camera. When all the fairies are collected, she awards the character further by giving them a special golden banana for 101% completion of the game. Her loyalty to her subjects and helpfulness to the Kongs definitely shows she has a good moral compass, even if she could be a bit more proactive in finding the fairies herself. And rounding out the good characters on our list, we have the original lady of Nintendo, Pauline. Formerly known under her previous name, The Lady, Pauline has received much more development in the Mario games as of late. However, we are looking at her role pertaining to the Donkey Kong series, where she is mostly a damsel in distress without many defining characteristics. In Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, Pauline shows that she is at the very least forgiving, accepting a toy from Donkey Kong as an apology for capturing her throughout the game. This shows she does have a big heart, which is expanded on later during her role in Super Mario Odyssey. Pauline has been cementing herself a bigger legacy as of late, and she has surprisingly become more lovable with each passing game. Now that we've swung through the good, it's time to banana slamma into the gray area. These are the characters with moral compasses that tend to flip-flop from game to game. Hopping onto the highest spot in the gray area, we have Jumpman, or as you may know him better, Mario. Much like Pauline, we are only judging the actions of this carpenter turned plumber in the Donkey Kong series. Mario is still portrayed as a hero in some sense, saving his girlfriend Pauline from the clutches of a deranged ape. On the other hand, he does go a little too far when he captures Donkey Kong and attempts to kill his son in Donkey Kong Jr. Mario is the hero again in the Mario vs. Donkey Kong games, where he retrieves the stolen Mario minis from Donkey Kong's grasp. This is definitely a good act, but isn't it kind of egotistical to make a toy company based on your own likeness? Overall, Mario's good deeds do land him at the top of the gray area, but his ego-driven and vindictive actions prevent Jumpman from jumping any higher. And with that said, he's the leader of the bunch, but not the most moral. Donkey Kong finally ground pounds his spot into our ranking. To be clear, this is not the original Donkey Kong from the arcade game. We'll get to him later. This is the descendant of that Donkey Kong who first appeared in Donkey Kong Country. Much like Mario, Donkey Kong is a hero of sorts and saves his island from destruction many times. He is, however, a reluctant hero who is often motivated by his own self-interest. In the original Donkey Kong Country, the entire motivation for his journey was to get his bananas back, which is much less noble than saving his friends. In Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, his only goal is to become king of the jungle. Anyone he helps along the way is mostly happenstance. What really ranks him in the gray area though are his actions in the Mario vs Donkey Kong series, where he becomes a villain and thief, stealing toys and women. Overall, we chalk his more heinous actions up to his stupidity, rather than having malicious intent. But that doesn't totally absolve the ape from his sins. Sneaking into the next spot, we have Snide the Weasel. Formerly a henchman of King K. Rule, Snide was eventually fired after finishing production on the Blastomatic in Donkey Kong 64. Creating a machine capable of destroying an island definitely knocks Snide down a few pegs in terms of his morality. He does redeem himself a little bit though by informing the Kongs about the blueprints so they can successfully dismantle the machine. Even so, it's possible he's doing this more out of bitterness towards King K. Rule than he is out of the goodness of his own heart. It's hard to say for certain, which is why Snide stands firmly in the middle of the gray area. Coming in next, we have the ape entrepreneur Swanky Kong. While Swanky is technically a member of the Kong family, he seems more neutral than the others when it comes to actually assisting them. True, he will award Diddy, Dixie, and Kitty for completing his minigames, but not without a price attached. His interest seems to be more focused on raking in coins than being a useful asset. While he doesn't have much of a role outside of hosting his side games, it's hard to rank him on any good deeds he may have been capable of behind the scenes. Still, he doesn't do anything outright evil, so we can't rank him any lower either. The most buff henchman in King K. Rule's army, Clubba, guards the next spot. 
Appearing in Donkey Kong Country 2 and Donkey Kong Land 2, Clubba is assigned as a guardian to prevent Diddy and Dixie from entering the Lost World. If the Kongs try to fight him, he'll knock them away in one fell swoop. The Kongs can bribe Clubba for entry into the Lost World, proving he is another character motivated by greed. Upon paying him, Clubba does have a change of heart and admits that King K. Rule is a tyrant who treats all of his minions poorly. He even offers to help the Kongs if they're in a tough spot, which never actually comes into play. Overall, while he does make things harder for the Kongs initially, his true character does show underneath, making him much more of a sympathetic Kremlin. And rounding out the bottom of the gray area are the hardest characters to rank, Trough and Scoff. Appearing exclusively in Donkey Kong 64, Scoff is an overweight hippo who eats bananas, which the Kongs collect on their journey. In doing so, he slams down on his platform and boosts Trough up to unlock the door to fight the boss of each world. It's hard to say which side these two support in the Kong vs. Kremlin war, if either one. If Trough and Scoff would simply switch positions, the Kongs could instantly fight the bosses, but they decide the Kongs need to help them out first. At best, they're selfish, and at worst, they are purposefully prolonging the Kongs' adventure. Still, they never do anything harmful to the Kongs, so we wouldn't consider them as particularly evil either. Finally, we reach the dark side. These are the characters who stir up trouble and make life much more difficult for our protagonists. These are the bad and the evil. Our least bad character in this category goes to the lowest ranking member of the Kong family, Cranky Kong. The old adversary in Nintendo's lineup of baddies, Cranky was the original Donkey Kong who captured Pauline all those years ago. After failing in his attempts, Cranky became old and bitter, adapting the nickname which he is known by today. Even when assisting his grandchildren in the Donkey Kong Country games, Cranky often berates and abuses them at the same time. In Donkey Kong 64, he creates potions which do ultimately have positive effects for the Kongs. These potions clearly could have used more testing based on the reactions the Kongs have from drinking them. Cranky does finally spring into action himself in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, where he uses his pogo stick to bounce. While this does give Cranky some brownie points, we don't think it quite redeems him from overall being a bad character in this universe. The first final boss to grace the countdown, Ghastly King from Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, takes the next spot. Possibly the same character or a relative of Cactus King, Ghastly King rules over the Fruit Kingdom and challenges Donkey Kong as the King of the Jungle. While little is known about his backstory, Ghastly King is a master of dark magic. It is implied that he brainwashed the other kings into fighting Donkey Kong, as demonstrated where they cheer on Donkey after Ghastly King's defeat. Not the most fleshed out character, but his actions do speak volumes of what Ghastly King would be capable of had he defeated Donkey Kong. Another master of mind control, Tiki Tong, manipulates himself into the first position. The main antagonist of Donkey Kong Country Returns, he steals Donkey Kong's bananas in order to harvest them into becoming Tiki minions for his Tiki Tak tribe. In doing so, he also hypnotizes various animals on the island to do his bidding for him. Tiki Tong is one of the few villains to explicitly die upon his defeat, exploding into pieces. This releases his dark hold over the beings of the island, so we can't exactly say that his death brought many tears to our eyes. The Bronze Medal of Evil goes to the Ruthless Conqueror, Lord Frederick, from Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Basically, your prototypical Viking walrus, Lord Frederick is the king of the Snowmats. He and his army exile the Kongs from their own island and cover said island in snow. It is stated that the Snowmads have a history of doing exactly that, and always being victorious until they met the Kongs. It's hard to say how much death and destruction Lord Frederick has left in his wake, but we're willing to bet it was quite a lot. His fate is unknown after his defeat at the hands of Donkey Kong, so it is possible that Lord Frederick continued pillaging island after island along with his fleet. The Silver Medal of Evil is awarded to the biggest enemy any Kong has ever faced, and that is the Dark Lord, Whizpig. Before the events of Diddy Kong Racing, Whizpig conquered his home planet and turned it into a giant theme park for his own amusement. Following this, Whizpig traveled from world to world conquering planets and likely left them in ruin upon growing bored of his position. He attempts to do the same to Timber's Island, but is thwarted by Diddy Kong and his friends. He was then banished to a deserted planet, but apparently escapes, possibly to wreak more havoc on other unsuspected worlds. His ruthlessness and persistence definitely grant him a spot this low on our list. 
And finally, our golden banana of evil goes to none other than Donkey Kong's most prevalent enemy, King K. Rool. A ruthless leader who abuses his minions, King K. Rool is demented and possibly mentally unstable. It is implied that most of his followers work for him out of fear than genuine loyalty. He also becomes progressively more evil throughout the game. He steals the Kong's bananas in the first Donkey Kong Country game for unclear reasons, and then captures the heroes in Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3. Finally, he becomes even more ruthless, attempting to destroy the Kong's home island in Donkey Kong 64. He is shown to be both a pirate and a mad scientist, which is a deadly combination. His mistreatment of everyone around him, greedy nature, and thirst for blood definitely rank him as the most evil character in the Donkey Kong universe. And that does it for our morality spectrum, but let's end things with some honorary sinner medals. The Darwin Medal would unfortunately have to go to Kitty Kong. He seems blissfully unaware of the reality of his situations or what kind of danger he's truly going up against. Some would say because he's an infant, but to that we say a stupid infant. The Pride Medal is awarded to the King of the Jungle himself, Donkey Kong. He beats his chest in pride during his idle animation in Donkey Kong Country to let his foes know who's really the boss. Honestly, you gotta respect it. The Wrath Medal is going to King K. Rool. Due to his numerous defeats, King K. Rool becomes increasingly angry, evil, and destructive as the games continue. The Gluttony Medal easily goes to Scoff. His only function in Donkey Kong 64 is to eat bananas. Enough said. The Sloth Medal is awarded to Scoff's partner, Troth. He'll turn a key to open the door to the boss fights. Other than that, he never leaves his position on his podium or does anything. The Envy Medal goes to Cranky Kong. While Cranky berates his grandchildren for not being able to live up to his potential, the reality of it is that Donkey Kong is successful in his prime, whereas Cranky wasn't. Sounds like a bit of jealousy to us. The Greed Medal is going to Swanky Kong. He is an entrepreneur with one goal in mind of making money off of whoever visits his booth. And finally, the Lust Medal is awarded to Candy Kong. While Candy seems to invoke lust in the rest of the characters, she is also shown to be quite flirtatious herself with everyone she comes into contact with. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what Nintendo series we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite games. But most importantly, stay wicked.